for all things Halloween. This is Haunt Former, and welcome back to another haunt vlog for the Cotton County Crematorium Haunt Build Series. Out of all of the builds that I have done and will do throughout the remainder of the month, this installment is perhaps the most important. Because you really can't have the Cotton County Crematorium without the crematorium. This has been a long time coming, and one of my favorite builds that I've ever done on my channel. Now, I can't take full credit for this design. The design for the crematorium has come from a couple of places, namely the crematorium animatronic from the Horror Dome, in addition to a couple of designs I saw on Pinterest. The name of the game for this build was affordability. I could easily see myself spending nearly a grand on doing this crematorium build, and while I would love to do something that elaborate, my budget for the haunt just didn't have it there for me. So, I'm going to show you how I made this relatively cheaply using a few sneaky techniques, definitely dependent on the perspective in which this thing is seen. But in order to fully get a grasp of it, I highly recommend you check out my unboxing of the Screamin' Hot decoration from Distortions Unlimited, as that particular character is going to be featured with this decoration. Let's jump into the build. We're going to start this build as where most builds begin, the Home Depot. Specifically, their lighting section. They had a nice rig for these... Flicker flame lights that I bought on Amazon, and you can pose these as well. I also went to my local Dollar Tree and found these really nifty, really cheap decals of brick paneling, which I will then add to a PVC frame, as you see here, the PVC, alongside poster board that I got at Michael's for, again, relatively cheap. The aim in this game is to make something that looks convincing out of these materials. I started with this basic L-shaped frame that will be a good baseline for adding on to it. I then took the paneling and attached the decals one by one. You'll notice in a second that some of the decals got a little bit ripped. That's not a worry though because we're going to be painting over this to make it look more grimy, grungy, and creepier. As you see here, that is the flame light that I got on Amazon. You can get them for very, very cheap. And in order to attach all of this to the frame, you're going to need Velcro. Because I was thinking about this, I could, in theory, glue it to the frame. But to me, it would just be this giant hulking mass that I'd have to store. Whereas with the Velcro, you can easily assemble and disassemble this. Because, as you see in this clip, this is a giant prop this is over seven feet tall i'm a six foot tall guy so as you can see it's a pretty big towering crematorium as it should be i then took some of the poster board one in particular and cut it up to make the frame around the opening of the crematorium where the body will in theory come in and come out but for the purposes of the haunt just lay this Bloody industrial light that I picked up from Spirit Halloween last year on the 50% off sale was a nice touch that I didn't originally plan on having for this prop, but it really brought the whole thing together. All I needed was one screw in the PVC, and as you can see, it adds this really nice lighting texture that I didn't have before. But before I fully add that on, I needed to paint the entire piece as I mentioned earlier, making it look a mixture of burnt, grunged, and old, because the haunt plan was to make this crematorium look extremely old and weathered. I used a technique called rub out, which is where you apply a whole lot of paint in one area, rub it away, and you're left with a darker, more gritty version of what you originally had, brings out some of the texture that you'll see on the wall, and I thought it turned out pretty good. 
I also, along with the black paint that I used, used a white to add an ashy effect. I then dried this off, which honestly didn't take too long considering I'm in the heat of Florida, and then brought it inside where I could reattach that industrial light. Now, as you can see, this thing is starting to take shape, but there are some empty spaces yet that I wanted to fill in, especially in the dark here. You can see that there there's a little bit of empty space between the, the uh, opening and the light. So what I did was I picked up this chain from Home Depot. It looks a little too shiny for my purposes, so I went ahead and added some rust-looking paint to it to make it look old, grimy, and deserted, and then attached that next to the light to look as if it were a chain that you pulled the door open with. And I found these outlet covers, also a little too shiny, and I uh, got some Rust-Oleum, got some more PVC, because I'm going to take the outlet covers, take this PVC, and create one further detail, and two, the tray where the body will lie. This quick color and Rust-Oleum worked wonders, both on the PVC and on the metal pieces. I didn't really need a whole lot of metallic on these particular pieces, more so the brown and black to give it the dirty look because I looked a little too fresh and I thought the result is really cool. You'll see in just a second how they look on the actual facade wall. As for this tray, I went ahead and added some brown and black highlights to make it look grimy, not to look too polished or clean. This is, again, where the bodies are supposed to be resting. And as you'll see in this next clip, it sticks ever so perfectly right out of the crematorium where I can gently and safely rest screaming hot. Now, it looks fine enough in the daytime you can see where Screamin' Hot's body mold cuts off but in the dark with the lights it looks really cool. One of the final steps that I had to do was add an actual door because with these old crematoriums they had a sliding door that would lift up for the body to be inserted. Found a really cheap handle and a cheap piece of sheet metal that I added over top the body. As you can see, I drilled it straight through the cardboard slabs, and I also added some Rust-Oleum paint to that as well. The final touch was adding the flame lights behind it to really emphasize the corpse and the burning effect. And as you can see, this crematorium is ready for Halloween night. It's going to have more lighting on the front, but overall, I'm really pleased with how this crematorium turned out. I love the detail work and the textures on it. As you can see, Screamin' Hot looks fantastic, right along with all of the chains, all of the metal pieces, and all the works. This is going to be such a great centerpiece for this haunted house, and I can't wait for you to see the final product. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember... For all things Halloween, this is Haunt Former.